Okay, we're live, and I'm on the right window now. Hey! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to A Branch of Laurels. I'm a Shaxi from Ontier, and tonight my guest is Viscount Seamus, also from Ontier, uh, from the Principality of the Summits. The Summits! Yay, Summits! Um, welcome. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. Yay. So uh, I usually start off by asking um, how you found the SCA and what made you fall in love with it. Um, so uh, we, my son's uh, mom and I actually used to have an antique slash costume store in our little town on the coast. Um, and we weren't actually involved in anything besides just dressing up. And uh, Cynthia DuPont, uh, who was from Ontario now lives in Meridiers, uh, frequent our store. Uh, she got uh, garb from us and stuff like that. And she kept saying, you need to come to this SCA thing. You need to come to this SCA thing. She literally was in like every single week, like telling us all of the activities and what was going on. Um, but it, what had happened is we had a really bad experience with an S, a couple of SCA people. And we're like, eh, I don't want anything to do with those people. They are rude. <laughs> so three years <laughs> of her trying to get us to go to something, she finally was like, hey, there's this event uh, in Eugene. Um, it's called Twelfth Night, and they have a masquerade ball. And we're like, well, we love masquerade balls. And so she she kind of got us to, to go there. And so uh, we um, – super panicked super worried that you know like our garb was not going to be great enough you know it was just like uh so um uh Honora, uh who was just stacy at the time because she hadn't picked her name uh had this um anne boleyn uh tudor era dress uh, and i had my uh, doublet and uh her all trim furred or trimmed in fur and all this stuff and we go to go in and and we were like oh okay like we, we've kind of almost felt a little overdressed for a little by a little while because <laughs> you know like we kind of got there early you and it, it, you know i was like what's going on because it was you know the ball kind of sometimes is a little slow getting going because of all the other stuff but we didn't know that there was all this other stuff right because we were just coming for the ball um and so uh we actually ended up having a really good time um and went to uh the next month and a month after i went to our first uh business meeting i signed up to be a deputy that day uh, <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> and uh so um just really you know realized that 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 one or two people that we had an issue with were was not the sc as a whole and so um I just we fell in love with the people and we like to dress up already so it was it was a good fit and and you jumped in uh, with better costumes than probably 70 percent of us <laughs> yeah we we were kind of set so <laughs> <laughs> i was saying before we went live i was going through your pictures and i was trying to figure out because usually when you when you go through people's uh, the photo evidence of people's sca journey you can tell as their costumes develop and right. as the Stacey's age, that you know, what the, what are the early pictures? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I can't tell at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, I uh, garb estate. It's definitely gotten a little bit better. Um, like I can look back and see, you know, how it's it's gotten better. But uh, we we were pretty pretty lucky that when we started. So that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, so you started out doing as a deputy for what office uh so arts and science oh, um i really like dancing um so in um, high school i started our high school swing uh, club uh, and i taught uh that and i did ballroom uh, i started dancing when i was three um and so i used to go to the jazz festival every year and and so uh dancing a couple times a week um and so when i joined the sca i thought that was something i really wanted to do um, and it, I love the period dancing. Uh, and I thought when I found out what a laurel was, I was like, that's what I want to be a laurel in is period dancing. And then I started reading about it and I, I just kept falling asleep. <laughs> 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 like I love to do the dancing, but reading the research about it, I just, I just couldn't. So, um, 
but I started as the uh, deputy ANS minister and uh, my focus was on dance. So at all of the Shire gatherings, I taught dance and that was kind of my thing when I started, so. Um, what, uh, how did you find what you were passionate about? Um, so I'm a pharmacy technician in uh, real life. And um, I just really like the history of, of medicine. I think it's really cool and neat. Uh, and I kind of um, just thought, well, why don't I do what I do in real life, but in my period? And so I, I uh, was entering an Alpine Scholar, which is the Summits Arts and Science uh, Championship and um, did a little project on it. and. Uh, used Culpepper's, which is actually out of period. Um, and so then I was like, okay, well, this is a good starting point. Uh, so it's within the the, five, the 50 year-ish uh, outside of period. Um, and so I kind of just started going backwards in time and just uh, filling up my wish list on Amazon with every, uh, <laughs> every period medical text I could find. So, um, and I, I would just sit and watch TV uh, and read. Uh, I like to read while I watch TV. Um, and so I would read these period uh, medical texts and just laugh and just think they're great fun and, and they're, they're silly and they're uh, complicated and they're just, they're just fun for me. So uh, I decided that was one of the things I wanted to do. Um, but I was still kind of all over the place. Um, and so until I got uh, apprenticed, I did stained glass and I, you know, I did dancing and um, dyeing and I did, um, you know, just all these different things. And so Eduardo really, uh, you know, put his thumb down on me and kind of made you focus in, made me focus. Yeah. <laughs> um, was there somebody uh, who was a mentor for you before um, you started meeting more people outside of your area? Um, so, uh, Sir Waldrick uh, had moved in from Calentier uh, into Timberhaven, and so he kind of started, um, but um, he uh, is super more focused on on his squires. Mm -hmm. like, you know, he's definitely fighter centric. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, he would, he's probably, if, if he watches this, he's not going to be very happy with me, but, uh, <laughs> I think, um, on tears, laurels were a little different than Callan tears laurels. And I think he was kind of, uh, he kind of actually encouraged me not to try and be a laurel. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> cause he's like, eh, the bar is too high. Like, you know, uh, you should just fight. And uh, that wasn't my thing, so. Yeah. Um, so. I, I think that uh, until people, Ontario's really um, rough on people from out of kingdom. Um, we have a horrible reputation for being really insular. And um, I think it's hard for peers from outside of the kingdom to make that transition, uh, especially right. if they don't already know some peers in the kingdom. and. I, w I hope that we can change that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think also his really first time going to a peerage council was Kingdom. Um, and it was a 12th night. And I think the way our process is uh, really leaves, by the time a person gets to Kingdom, their presentation is pretty impressive. Um, yeah. And so I think if you if that's all you see, you're like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> right. So <laughs> um, it's kind of like uh, fast forward to the end of a, of end of a story and you see the hero uh, in their final stuff and you don't see it, the, the path. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that had a lot to do with it too. I think that makes sense. I mean, there are kingdoms that don't even have, um, they don't keep notes on candidates. They don't, you know, they yeah. don't any of that and and to go from a king and I don't know what I don't know anything about Calentier's council but to go from a kingdom that that doesn't really keep notes on candidates to what we do right must yeah. be really like what is happening right now <laughs> yeah. 
insane. <laughs> well, and you know, we're a fairly large kingdom. Yeah. And so uh, our regional system, um, I think is totally different than what a lot of people do because they their kingdom's small enough that all the laurels meet all the time just together. They don't have this multi-step process. Yeah, um, yeah. So. And we just can't do that. I mean, now, but, that, now that we have technology, maybe a little easier, but there's still too many people for, a Zoom, for one Zoom meeting. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I know very few non-laurel artisans from Thierry, for example. Yeah. You know, like I <laughs> just I don't, you know, so... Yeah. And, it's hard and I, enough. Go ahead. I don't think that you should have an expectation of yourself to know all of, I, I almost killed myself trying at when I first became, I need to know all the people doing all right. the things so that I can make sure everyone gets recognized. And then I was like, no, there's no way. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it's enough work, just your region. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause there are six, seven regions right now. My brain is not firing. Um, uh, so summits, uh, rivers, eastern, inland, uh, inlands, right? Um, Pacifica, western, and Tiree. So yeah, six. Yeah, I, I say seven because I'm used to Abacal, but no, oh, yeah, they're on their own now. So yeah, yeah. Six, six regions and a hundred candidates per region, maybe. Yeah, you know, if you include everybody. Yeah, that's a lot. So it's too many for one person to track. Yeah, yeah, it's just <laughs> it's too much. Too much. <laughs> um, anyway, so we uh, we 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 went down a rabbit hole and got off your story. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so so you were encouraged to fight uh, instead of do art stuff. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that is uh, when I entered Kingdom Arts and Science for my first time, um, and I did a single entry, um, and I was like, you know what, my goal for this Kingdom arts and science uh, is for laurels to say who is Seamus or no to say Seamus isn't ready yet that's what it was Seamus isn't ready to be a laurel not who the hell is Seamus so um, I did my thousand ways to die uh, entry and um, you know I just kind of went there just to uh, get to know people and uh, turns out Eduardo was one of my judges and uh, <laughs> he asked me to if I was interested in being a student and uh, it kind of went from there so awesome so I will tell you what the reaction um, of the laurels were <laughs> to your, it was who the hell is this guy and where did he come from he's awesome we've got to hook him up with someone he <laughs> got to get him a mentor <laughs> um, and and there was a lot of like who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? And uh, Eduardo, Eduardo drew the short straw. Well, Eduardo said he wanted it. And no. <laughs> everybody's like, all right, we're going to back off. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it was super exciting to see your entry. Um, it's one of the things I, I, I just love about Kingdom Arts and Sciences is um, seeing the things that people get into and it felt like you were just you came out of out of nowhere, which is something I think we can talk about. You know, you're you're way in the southern end of the kingdom. I am. Um, you were the only Laurel in your area. I'm actually one of two. Oh. Uh, uh, Viscount Snorri Randolphson actually moved from the west, uh, uh, and so uh, uh, we met during. Uh, are when we both reigned because he was the first uh consort of a same gender um couple or pair in the west uh they won just right after us and they stepped up first so um we uh i went down to support his reign and and um so he ended up uh he's now one of my partners and uh, he moved up to here and so um you know we um so now we've got two <laughs> that's awesome yeah yeah that's, that's super cool um what was i gonna say so how, what was it like going from i mean the summits is an incredible art art artist community um but they're like the best sex kept secret of on tier in a lot of ways yeah so um 
So it's it's two hours for me to get to my next branch, um, just to get to the I five corridor, um, and to Audiantum. It's a two hour drive for me, and then I have to you know go out of the summits, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, you know my branch uh, is. Um, my one of my one of my students lives in Timberhaven. Uh, it's a two hour drive for her to get to me before you start that two hour drive to I five. So you know, I mean, we are just so far removed. And then you know, the summits as a whole is the very bottom of the of the kingdom. Um, so it is really hard um, to get uh, people out and to um, get them uh, traveling. And that's definitely one thing that uh, Waldrick and uh, Mistress Doe, um, or as she likes to say, just Doe, um, uh, really pushed was for me to get out of the summits and to get up into the kingdom. Um, but it's definitely, it's discouraging quite often because um, we go to events and people complain about their two hour drive, <laughs> you know, and they're just like, oh, you know, yeah, a two hour drive. I'm like, yeah, well, I, I, I drove eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it just, it's discouraging. And it's, um, you know, there are definitely multiple times that uh, I was, I felt like I was going to burn out just because you just had to push so hard to get those places. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. How um, how do you think that technology and how how much the kingdom's attitude towards technology has shifted this year will help with that? Oh, uh, it'll be amazing. Um, <laughs> like, like, it's just, um, so, you know, I mean, there's definitely was some shift before this year, um, but I think um overall it'd just be so much more accepting um and you know i i hate to use the phrase uh count towards but you know your arts that you do and people can see it online will count towards your your path on the laurel right yeah uh, so much easier than it than it would have been uh pre-pandemic so uh, there's definitely been some pluses with that and the way the, the attitude of the kingdom has, sh has shifted. Yeah, and, and I think it's something that um, a lot of us have really uh, been pushing for for a long time. And um, I'm super excited to see us finally get pushed over that edge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm spoiled. I'm right in the, in the heart of things. But raising a family, I haven't had the bandwidth to go to events regularly. Um, and I have a kid who gets car sick, uh, you know, Ugh. 10 minutes in. And uh, yeah, a two hour drive is torture. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, we, we have so many artisans that burn out and quit playing before they can get to the level that they're seen yeah. at a kingdom level. Yeah. Um, and that's just terrible to me. Like, I totally understand, you know, that they need that people need to get out. They need to experience the kingdom. I love going to other kingdoms and going to their events and inner kingdom wars. Like, uh, something uh, when I rained drink um, that uh, <laughs> that I tried to do. I went to golf wars and I went to the mists a couple times. And you know, like it was, you know, it was really getting out, experiencing other kingdoms and seeing the way they do things and making those connections in other kingdoms is fantastic and amazing. Um, it, it's and one so, of the best ways to combat burnout. Yeah, right. Yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> we also need to realize that uh, not everyone can financially afford yep. to drive eight hours every weekend. Um, and we lose people that can be wonderful assets to our society because they don't make it to the point and they feel dis disheartened and they feel discouraged because they can't afford to drive all that time. 
yes, they should get out once in a while. We don't want them just to stay in their branch. Um, and, you know, we should all try and help them. Like, you know, we, I carpooled a lot, <laughs> you know, like, well, I'll try and stuff as much of my ANS display in the back of this person's car and, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, off I go. But, um, Abacall used to rent a bus, <laughs> shove everyone on it and go. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, the summits as definitely, it's not that the summits wasn't doing it before. Um, but there's a lot more people in the summits who are able to help people. Uh, it was just a numbers thing, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. And so I, there's definitely been a shift, um, even and us being able to help the summits more. Um, but at the same time, we need to look at technology as a way to help fight that uh, burnout and help allow these people who can be wonderful assets to our society to, you know, be lifted up and be what they can be in the society. How um, how does having Onto West War down in your area um, help with that? Um, so it helps somewhat. Um, it definitely allows people to meet other people from Outer Kingdom um, and allows people to go to ANS classes. Um, but there's not a lot of there's not a lot of display options. Um, and like I've coordinated arts and science for Ontario West for a couple of years. <laughs> and it is really hard because everything's outside and like finding tents. And so like my focus has always been on classes. So yeah. it's been really hard to find the space, the tables, everything for displays where I think displays and competitions are two of the best places to really connect with people about their their arts and science um and so it doesn't we don't have that at that event um and big events like that you know it's uh we're super busy yeah. uh you know most of the people that are attending are focused on the fighting and that kind of stuff and so um it's great i love i love the one time of the year I can say, oh, yeah, well, I've got an hour drive to go home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it. It's great, but there's still um, I don't think it does all that it can. Um, yeah. And I don't think it does as much as having an arts and science focused event. Right. Closer. Right. Right. I um, I'm going to do some thinking about that and see if there's something that we can do to change that a little bit because it's um I, mean, I think about Penzik and they've got I mean granted they have buildings on site right, right. they've got a big ass barn that turns into an ANS display that's it's amazing unbelievable it's so cool <laughs> right and I think maybe we're missing an opportunity um yeah. for I, I, the the cook's play date that happens at Ontario yeah. West War is amazing for that segment of the arts community um but it would be super cool to, you know, do other stuff too. So I'll think well, and like two, uh, well, I don't even know how many years ago it is now. It's all a blur, right? Uh, <laughs> we missed years and I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, but one of the years, um, Mistress Atia and um, mundane name, uh, Kim Strump. Um, Nadezhda. Nadezhda. I'm like, all I can think of is her Facebook name. It's, um, it's all. Right. Uh, they were fantastic and amazing and, and got uh, the kingdom tents uh, pavilion so we could set up classes there and, you know, got us tables, which uh, one year we had hay bales and doors, which were better than nothing. Like, <laughs> I'm so thankful we had, some, but it's, there's not a lot for the ANS uh, department and the right. ANS people at Art, at Ontario West War. And so, um, you know, it definitely needs, it needs some help. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and, and that's a remote event. And, yeah. you know, I mean, it's not for you, but for the rest, <laughs> it's a remote event. And maybe, maybe the kingdom needs to invest in some infrastructure that yeah. stays on site or, or stays in a, in a storage. I mean, that's how they do it for Penzik, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Gold Beach isn't too far. Um, if uh, Lyle and Diane didn't have the storage, you know, 
Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, storage lock uh, in Gold Beach is not super expensive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and yeah. and uh, we have Traherne down there, Master Traherne. He can he can haul it for us. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you volunteering. No, we're just <laughs> volunteering him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's that's an interesting thing to think about. Um, I, I think there's some uh, opportunities there that we might yeah. be missing, and I don't want to. I don't want anybody to take that as a criticism against the event or no. or anyone that's um, uh, put so much work into running that event because it's a huge. It's a huge it, amount of work. Yeah. It's it's impressive what they can get to that site. Like, I mean it's it's fantastic and amazing everything that has been done i just you know and everybody that goes to that war loves it so yeah it, yeah it's it's definitely one of my top five events so yeah, yeah yeah so um we just think maybe we could zhuzh it a little bit yeah just a little zhuzhing yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so how did going to that kingdom ans change things for you uh, it changed so much um uh so it also uh right about that time i also had uh previously just had some bad experiences with laurels um and so i was kind of coming back from a uh from the i want to be a dance laurel then going oh no i don't want to be a dance laurel to i don't want anything to do with those people <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of assholes right yeah i was like <laughs> um and uh you know had some had some not great feedback uh, from some people and some things that uh, now that I'm a Laurel, uh, looking back and saying, okay, I can see where they were coming from or, but just really, <laughs> you know, like uh, anyone can walk through the woods and pick plants. Uh, there's nothing special is kind of the, and I was like, <laughs> you know, I was just, what? <laughs> so, um, that's and in a, in a way, that's true, right? Like, I can throw a bunch of plants on a table, and without telling you what they are. Um, but you know, it, it d didn't come across well, right? Um, and being young uh, in the SCA and not really knowing what I was doing, um, it definitely kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. Um, How but. Did Oh, go ahead. Finish. Finish. But uh, uh, going to Kingdom S really, Kingdom A and S really uh, changed that. Um, and I, I, I met a bunch of really great laurels there, um, and Eduardo. Um, <laughs> not that you know, but uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, uh, it really, um, really kind of changed the way I thought about uh, thought about laurels. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was not only an amazing event because there's just so much stuff that's just, yeah. uh, you know, sitting there and just listening to people geek about their uh, stuff is just amazing. Um, and sitting in on the, the presentations are, is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and so uh, it really changed my perspective of laurels, uh, ch changed and opened up the kingdom to me. Um, I started making connections outside of my area. Um, and it really just kind of changed my whole perspective. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I started out in an area um, where my personality absolutely clashed with all of the peers in my area. It just was not. It was not a good a good match. And um, I found myself getting a lot of negative feedback, and it was very very discouraging. And I moved. To another area and it was a whole new world yeah um and that's a tough thing because different areas and different places you know grow in different directions and and develop their own cultures and if you don't fit in that culture then you think everybody in the sca is like that and yeah. it's not necessarily true no so um, that's that's hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's really hard. Um, I, I I feel you on that one. Um, how did you groom your entry for Kingdom A and S? Um. So, I, uh, 
so I'm, uh, I was going to school for chemistry. Um, I'm very science based um, and uh, kind of started with uh, one of my favorite uh, things to find evidence against is the statement such and such is not period. Um, <laughs> I love to find evidence that something is when someone says it isn't. Um, um, but uh, someone, I, I, I think it was Yama, uh, one of Waldrick's mass, uh, squires and his son, uh, said something about orange or some color not being, he was told some color was not period. Mm. And looking back, it's probably, it was in heraldry that it's not period, right? Mm -hmm. But he made the say, and then I was like, what? that doesn't make any sense. And so like, I was like, well, what colors are? And like, we, you know, we so often think of period clothing as, um, or at least people who are not uh, knowledgeable uh, or haven't really experienced it yet, kind of think, uh, we'll say the mundane uh, idea is that the medieval clothes were all drab, right? Everything was brown. I, I, I blame the movie industry for that. I yeah. have a rant about it. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I thought, well, what colors can I get? And so I just, um, you know, started researching dyeing. And um, I thought, well, well, I know uh, mordant uh, allows the dye to attach to the fiber. Um, and then there are all these additives. And so I basically set up an experiment where I had uh, copper, urine, and um, alum, and then different additives that I could use to change the pH and try and get different shades. And so then I just found period dyes and then went through it just like a science experiment. Um, and so I just kept and, going until I had a thousand of them. And you, yeah, a, you, a thousand. <laughs> Cause you know, that's normal. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I have pictures of that. Um, okay. And we'll get to that um, in a little bit. Um, it was, it, it blew my mind. I walked into that room and I was like, what? <laughs> Who is glad, that? <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. That yeah. was my intention. <laughs> yeah. Well, mission accomplished. Um, yeah. It was very impressive. And, uh, I think it's really interesting that you were able to do that on your own without having somebody um, uh, mentor you through how to shape an entry for Kingdom ANS because Kingdom ANS can be really, really challenging. I scored terribly. It was so bad. Um, but at the same time, it was a like a science experiment, right? Like it wasn't, and it was the old uh, judging forms. Uh, praise any god, goddess, anything uh, for the the kingdom rubrics that we use now. Like they're just amazing, and anyone who worked on them uh, is amazing. <laughs> so um, the old ones were just horrendous. Uh, from uh, I never judged on them, so I don't know how terrible they were for people judging. Yeah. But as a contestant, uh, as a co competitor. Uh, they were terrible um, and they didn't fit everything uh, and so my entry really wasn't uh, it didn't fit right yeah. and so I scored terribly and I was upset about it but that wasn't my goal for entering Kingdom ANS so you know I, I achieved my goal and yeah. um, good good I'm glad yeah. that that didn't um, wreck you I, I did do a lot of judging on the old forms and um, people that didn't look at the forms before they did their entry yeah. and didn't taper their entries to the forms, that was brutal. Yeah. You know, I'm judging you on this thing and this is what, these are the criteria and I can't give you points for this because it's not something that you did. Right. But your work is amazing and you're awesome, but right. yeah, yeah. It, that part of it really sucked. So <clears throat> agreed. Yeah, yeah. So um, after Kingdom ANS, you ended up being a student 
I did, yeah. So uh, Eduardo does um, a year and a day of, as a student, um, and you have to per, uh, finish a project. Um, and so I've kind of uh, picked that up, and I do that with my uh, students and apprentices. Uh, awesome. And um, I really think it is really important that uh, peer to apprentice relationship is really good, right? Um, and I, I kind of have reasons for a peer. Uh, a voice in counsel. Uh, sometimes that's all you need, right? Uh, sometimes you just need someone from your area. <laughs> like you can find a laurel that is close uh and and that's what waldrick was um waldrick was in my branch he had moved in i didn't know what that was like um and so that experience with him um fulfilled that and so i i it started me on my path and i figured out because i didn't have a, a peer in my area um and then you have a, a peer, you can have a peer that is within your same area, right? Um, and really help you with that. Um, and while Eduardo, uh, you know, he says he was laureled for uh, Italian housewifery, right? So anything that that, that a housewife would have done in, in, uh, in, a, in Italy. And it kind of dabbles in a lot of the stuff that I'm in, but you know, like our, our areas of interest really didn't mesh. Yeah. Um, but what he gave me was a family. Um, my apprentice siblings, um, I just love them to bits. Um, and, you know, Eduardo and, and Finn have become family. Um, and all of my apprentice siblings are like family. And so that year gives you a chance to find out, is this the type of relationship I'm, I'm looking for? And, um, and is it a good match? And is it a good match? Yeah. And so what I needed from Eduardo uh, and my peer was a family and somewhere to be because I didn't have a bunch of people from my area going with me. I often was going by myself and just sleeping in the back of my car. You know, like I, I didn't have the gear, I didn't have the support from my area because we're a little tiny shire and we didn't have any peers and we didn't have, you know, um, so uh i i we used that year to find out if it was a good match and it, it turned out it was um and so i think it's super important um and one of the things i really love that he does is he has like apprentice weekends yeah apprentice weekends are the best thing um <laughs> and uh you know sadly there ended up being a pandemic uh, before <laughs> i could actually have any of my own but um they're just amazing he opens up his house all of the apprentice are invited and we just sit for uh, the weekend working on projects. Um, he gets out this little whiteboard um, and like writes all of our names on it, what our OP is, uh, you know, kind of to like get, get you to understand what that is. You know, like he, it, he just teaches you about the SCA. We have household projects that we all work on together. So, you know, we need to work on the on his tent, you know, and that, that we all use. And so this is what we're going to do. And then what is our individual projects that we're going to work on? You know, and so it's it's fantastic. Like it's amazing. Setting. Lots of drinking um, and eating so much food oh. uh, and just connecting and bonding and um, it's just so much fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how long were you apprenticed to him? A while? A couple years? A few years? I don't know. You don't remember? How, how long was it from that first ANS entry to when you got Laurel? I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, six years? Okay. Something like that, I think. Okay. Uh, I know I was, it was eight years, eight years from my AOA to my Laurel. Yeah, so I, I think probably six years. Well, yeah, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, the Prince thing in the middle, like that kind of, like I he, he released me from my apprenticeship and so like, I'm not, it kind of got murky. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah yeah um <laughs> is that just because of fealty yeah so he has a very uh you know very important uh and strong feeling about fealty um and because when we were done i was a royal peer uh he you know uh couldn't he couldn't keep me well so he actually offered um to make an exception uh because i was a royal peer and not another peer um but was not happy about that um because we didn't really actually talk about it before we won uh cornet um and so i think he felt I, w I was not aware of the fact that I was not going to be taken back as an apprentice. Oh. <laughs> like I didn't really like think about it. Right. And yeah. so I think he felt bad and he was willing to kind of bend his rules a little bit, um, but wasn't happy about it because neither of us really wanted to make a distinction between royal peers and other peers and make it so that because he wouldn't take a pelican as a peer and he wouldn't take a knight, you know, he wouldn't take a mod. Um, and so oh, by making that you know, so he wouldn't take a a, a, a polling peer, right? Right. Uh, and he didn't want to take a royal peer, but was willing to make that exception for me. But we both didn't want to make that exception, right? We didn't. Right, wanna... because you want to make sure that that uh, a royal peer is considered on the same level as, as right. the peerages. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, he, um, you know, we we stayed. Un, 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 unattached, uh, but I mean, he was still was, you know, I know he was still my, my voice on the council and he yeah. was still my coordinator for my elevation. And oh, it, it really didn't change uh, much, except I just wasn't wearing his, his belt, so. That's interesting. Um, I've, when I've had apprentices, I've always had royal peers as apprentices. Uh, so uh, I have, yeah, I, I don't <laughs> have that everyone. distinction. Yeah. Um, as long as, uh, in my mind, as long as the fealty, so one of my students is actually from another kingdom um, and we're not in fealty yet because we're, she's just my student. Um, and I kind of really kind of went back and forth a lot on it. And I actually talked a ton with uh, Mrs. Tulia of the West uh, about it just because we randomly just talk for long periods of time. Um, and I really kind of feel that as long as in your contract, um, you have that is mentioned um, that you won't ask anything of them that goes against their fealty to their crown that I, I, I I'm I'm okay with that yeah. um, but at the same time I respect Eduardo's views on it and yeah. each, yeah, each person's fealty is their own thing it's very um, personal and um, I guess I don't really require fealty um, so it's an easy thing for me to to do. Um, mm -hmm. I have a much more relaxed way of doing things, which um, is perfect for the people that I work with. Right, so. right. It's, <laughs> it, it's important to have the variety because yeah. <laughs> no, it's not going to work for everyone, right? Right, right. Um, I don't give people assignments. No. So. <laughs> uh, so I think I think it's an I like so I, I, I require a student project. Um, because I don't need them to be my student, to be my friend. Right. And so like, if they just want to hang out, then we can just hang out. But yeah. if they want to be my student or an, an ultimate my apprentice, then we need to see how we work together on yep. from an arts and science point of view. So, yep. yeah. but. Yeah. And that's, I think that's one of the beautiful things about, um, about the way that um, our peerage is and, um, peer student relationships work is that they're all totally personal. Yeah. And um, it's it's one of the things that makes it so important for new people to give themselves some time before they attach themselves to a, a peer right away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah. It, you don't want you don't want that bad taste left in your mouth after, <laughs> you know, if, if it doesn't work out and, uh, you know, you, you want to kind of have a better idea of what you're getting yourself into so that you can make a better decision, whether this is a relationship you want. Um, and, and that's hard because people want to have that 
sense of family and they want to yeah. have that sense of belonging. Yeah. And when that's offered up, it's really hard to, to say no. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it can be an amazing thing and you we all want that. Yeah. That connection. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So um, let's talk about your reign a little bit. Um, how did that come about? And uh... um, so um, when the BOD changed the wording to allow kingdoms to make the decision. Um, so um, basically they, they kind of put it in as, as allowed kingdoms to make a variance. Uh, so it, they didn't change the actual way Kapora was, you know, it still was like, it has to be a member of the opposite gender, right. but kingdoms can make a decision to go otherwise. Make exceptions um, to Make that exceptions, role. right? Yeah. Um, luckily, uh, Ontario is amazing. Uh, the summits, I am not sure after the first coronet if anyone even had to ask. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it was kind of like the first time you asked was, you know, is it okay? But other than there was no, it was just automatically assumed in the summits that yeah. that are that are populists that were fighting for um, members that were the same gender um, or for members that were non-binary um, that that was okay here. Um, and uh, Viscount Turk had um, fought for another uh, another gentleman uh, as friends and that person I can't remember who he fought for but um, he wasn't super ready to reign um, and so uh, Turk and I were hanging out at a September Crown or uh, something in, in the back of court and laying in the grass uh just hanging out and he said hey you know you want to you want to maybe enter coronet together and and i said oh yeah sure and you know like didn't think anything of it really like it was kind of a we'd both been kind of drinking a lot and uh just relaxing and um then cornet came up and and he said, all right, are you, are you ready to enter? And I was like, oh, <laughs> you were serious. <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> so um, we're doing this. We're doing it. <laughs> um, and so um, it was down in uh, Glen Dufin. And uh, they, uh, we won. It was, it was, uh, it was crazy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was, I, I remember, uh, you know, so the finals are happening, right. And, and I just, my heart was just like beating out of my chest, you know, it was, it was great. And so, um, you know, we, uh, that was in September and we stepped up in December. Um, and I had served on a lot of retinues. I'm a retinue junkie. And uh, so I knew uh, most of who I wanted on my retinue. Um, I had been in enough positions and I had helped in enough reigns that really the, the prep for it wasn't too bad. Uh, Turk had done it before with, with Viscountess Vesta. Um, so you know, he knew what he was doing. Um, and then, so we were super excited. Um, Eduardo, uh, Eduardo and uh, Mistress Ariel were the two people that started the inspirational equality. Um, and so it was really awesome to be able to be the first same gender royal pair in Ontir uh, for my Laurel that had started this. Um, and so it was, it was, it was awesome. It was amazing. Uh, and then six weeks later, uh, Snorri and Duomus won, and I cursed them because uh, <laughs> they stepped up before us. <laughs> um, and so then I went down and, and supported them. And um, so, and then overall, the, the rain was fantastic. Um, I, uh, Turk let me create an award uh, for science. 
uh, focus stuff. So we have the silver crucible and the summits for people who do science focused arts and science. So um, it was pretty amazing because as a person who does science, it is so often uh, in a research paper, it's not shiny. It's not, um, sometimes it's not easy to display in a way that people can figure out what the heck you're doing. Um, and so, um, I like to try and make science sexy. Um, and um, it actually says on the back of my Laurel card, um, thanks to uh, Dame Christiana for saying making science sexy. And uh, <laughs> uh, it just, it was amazing. So getting to do that, um, getting to see the inner workings of the peerage councils, um, I was uh, so very welcomed by the uh, ladies of the Valorous Estates. Um, they, were, are, they are and were fantastic and amazing. Um, so overall, the rain was amazing. Uh, there was a few, you know, there was some people that kind of felt like they avoided us. Um, but overall, the summits was super supportive. Um, and actually, um, more supportive than some of the people actually in the mists, which was really, it was amazing. Um, some of the things that, that uh, Snorri had said to him while he was uh, prepping for his reign and during his reign. Um, and he actually talked about it as step down and it was uh, really super emotional. And um, he was, he was told, um, not to look too gay on the throne um and like it was just like it was a lot of backhanded compliments and it was just and so he stood up yeah and so he stood up and talked about it in his in his step down and good for him the support that came back from that was just amazing um he had done um his guards and attendants all wore blue feathers um and so um, some wonderful people made him a, just a bunch of them so that they, and then, I mean, they started handing them out at, at, at the end of his reign, everyone, everyone in, that was there, you know, who didn't have one, wanted one to support and show that that was not okay. Um, and so it was amazing. Um, so, but we didn't really have any of that here. Um, and so that was, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but I think in Ontario, we really fought hard and uh, we did a lot of work um, to change minds mm -hmm. and uh, normalize it. And the people that didn't agree with it, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I mean, that was the, it's, it is the West Kingdom. So while it is, you know, like San Francisco and surrounding area, uh, they are the first kingdom and they're sometimes a little slow to change. Uh, what's good in ANS, AS3, <laughs> you know, so, um, but I, I love, I love uh, all my friends from the West. Uh, yeah. I just like to tease them for, you know, never changing a light bulb. Um, well, and, and, and the um, tradition is hard to change. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I even find myself, you know, uh, traditions are hard and uh, I don't like change. Right. Yeah. Even though like I was part of it, <laughs> you know? And so like, you know, I was, I love the fencing community. I have so many friends that are in the fencing community. I'm happy that they have a path to peerage. Uh, and now I'm, you know, happy that there's the mods and all, all of my friends get to be masters of defense. But when it first was coming out, I was kind of like, I don't want another peerage. Like, yeah. Um, so you know, it. My gut react, my inner, my initial reaction was, you know, no, I don't want the change. You know, and now I'm happy that those people have that, and you know, it. Now, I feel the same way. I, you know, in Ontario, we recognize. I, I had to spend some some time really wrapping my head around. Um, you know, we already recognize rapier fighters and archery people in the mm -hmm. Laurelit. Um, 
but it's different because right. Ahmad is for um, martial excellence. Right. And not necessarily, I mean, they can be research wonks as well, but not necessarily. Right. Um, and I, if we had to like start all over again, I really wish that all of the martial activities could be under one umbrella. Bingo. <laughs> um, but that, it, it, there's a whole rant about, you know, um, first among equals with the, with the chivalry council. Right. Um, you know, and I also felt, I, you know, I felt when that was, you know, I'm not a member of the shiv. And so like, I felt like that wasn't my place to say, cause it's not my order. Um, and I mean, the ship has sailed, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can't put that back in the box. <laughs> yeah, now. yeah. So, uh, and 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 I think that um, that the SCA has benefited hugely from a new peerage developing that yeah. doesn't have all of the baggage and the uh, the gender. Um, issues that the the order of the chivalry has mm -hmm. um they were able to to kind of start all fresh and take care of some of those issues right at the beginning yeah. and um, have laid some really important groundwork uh for um what i hope becomes change across yeah. all the bridges so yeah. um, i think that uh it's been actually a fantastic thing <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> and um and uh, I'm very grateful for the work that they have done in creating the peerage, so. Yeah, yeah, they're amazing. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at, um, did, was that all you wanted to talk about? about yeah, your... sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at, at some pictures and we'll continue. Um, you know, I wanna hear about you getting put on vigil and, and what your laureling was like and all that. Um, but. Let's look at some of your early experiences in the SCA. So this is my first camping event. Um, uh, Timber Havens War in the Trees. Um, and uh, next to me, uh, well, on one side of me is Pluto, the dog. Uh, and uh, then Cynthia DuPont, uh, now Baroness uh, Cynthia DuPont. She got a court barony in, in Meridies. Uh, she is the one who pulled me dragging, kicking, screaming into the SCA. Um, thank you. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah, she, she is, uh, the level of work that she has put into newcomers, uh, is mind blowing. Um, she, for years before I joined the SCA, you know, uh, I've only been in the SCA since 09 or something like that. Um, since she sends welcome packets to any new person that she comes across, um, she reaches out to people if they comment in some group that she's in, hey, I'm new in the SCA, she reaches out to them and says, hey, can I get a mailing address? I wanna send you a welcome packet. And she sends you know information on the SCA, uh, the documentary that was done about the SCA, uh, she is an amazing person for pointing and saying, this is the person you need to get a hold of. Um, the work she has done for newcomers is mind blowing, uh, way levels above any other person I've ever seen in the SCA. I just can't even tell you the amount of work that woman has done, uh, for newcomers in our society, like just mind blowing. Um, and then next to her is uh, Lord William, uh, who uh, used to play here in Timberhaven, an amazing artist. He's actually one of the first um, Spider-Men that did like stuff for Hollywood, like out on the street and like would like climb light poles. And it was a quick draw. Uh, he could fire like uh, all six rounds in like, uh, it just sounded like one gunshot. He's just wow. an amazing guy. He does a great archery and um, He's just a really great guy. So That's those true. were uh, two of the people that I kind of bonded with in the in in Marshire, and kind of uh, helped me uh, get started. Wow. Nope. 
Do you oh. see that? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, Anora and Jarek, and this was one of his um, one of his camping events. His little garb. Uh, he's ten now, um, and uh, um, this is at an SCA event out at Laverne Park, one of the area, one of the sites we use here in Timberhaven. Um, out on, by the archery field so um he he is just amazing um and she's a wonderful seamstress uh she has made so much of my garb um so and as she does it full time now uh she has an etsy store and um she just makes garb for a living now so that's really great well maybe you could put the uh link in the comments i will yeah yeah cool. Um, so this was when uh, Finn and Faunus stepped up as barons of uh, Dragon's Mist. And I was given the Dragon's Kin, um, which is like an honorary member of Dragon's Mist. Um, uh, it was a, an amazing event. Uh, they were the first same gendered uh, barons in, in, on tier. Um, and uh, Giles and Giuseppe uh, came up from Kaid. They were the first in the society. Um, and so they came up to support them and I met them uh, and, and grew really, became really good friends with them. And um, it, was, it was an awesome starting point here in Ontario. really started that whole movement. Um, and was this after your ans entry at yes level? okay yeah yeah so i had already i i think this was right after that because i'm not wearing a belt unless i forgot my belt which i almost never did because i didn't want to be ridiculed for forgetting my <laughs> student belt uh, <laughs> but yeah it was amazing um, so this was my one and only time uh, entering a cornet tournament. Um, as a fighter. As a fighter. Um, uh, my uh, consort was Honora at the time. Uh, she is now Kanavati and has since become my student. Um, she was Viking uh, and she made her outfit uh, just because I was tutor uh, to be my consort. I know she's pretty amazing. That's cool. Um, and, uh, my goal was not to be out in one shot, uh, in each round <laughs> and I wasn't, <laughs> I was out in two rounds, but neither of them are one shots. So, um, I love that you have victory conditions for everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all about setting goals and achieving them and setting them so that you can achieve them. And it, <laughs> so Setting yeah. them in a reasonable. What is the um, Baldric that you have on? Uh, so that is the Alpine Scholar Baldric. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's for the Arts and Science Champion. Um, I actually have won it twice, and I think the only the only reason I entered the second time was just because I wanted to wear it more. Um, <laughs> it is like my favorite piece of of Summit's regalia. It is just it's beautiful. You can't really see it, but where the the pieces come together, uh, there's a great cutout with the yeah right there with the summits device and um, it's just, it's gorgeous, so. Very cool. All right. And then I think we get into, this is the first time I saw you. Yeah, so this is my thousand ways to die. Um, so I did wool and cotton and silk. And then I did, um, the first few were period dye recipes and then it moved on to uh, this the this dye with all these different additives and different mordants. Um, and Honora really put up with um, our our house smelling terrible um, from the stale urine. Uh, and I did it all on my kitchen stove. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at one point, she actually got home and uh, walked up onto the sidewalk and went 
Oh, it's a terrible smell. I hope it's not coming from my house. And unfortunately, when she opened the door, it was. Um, so, uh, and this was, uh, I don't know what, I, I think I was testing my display method. I was trying to figure out a way to get uh, each mini skein is three yards. And so I was trying to figure out a way to display it so you could see all of the colors and um, see it all at once so that you could. And it, it was so impressive. You walked into the room and it was just like this wall of color and it was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you talked about um, research papers not really having that shiny aspect and you, um, with these, I mean, we're going to show a bunch of your displays. With these displays, you've really managed to um, change that. Yeah, I think if you make, if you do an art uh, and you make an item, uh, it is a lot easier for you to display that item and people will be like, oh, cool. Um, but if you do science or something that's not as easily displayed, you really have to think outside the box. <laughs> and you really have to figure out a way to get people to come and check it out. Because uh, that's the way you meet people. And that's the way you, I have learned so much every time I've entered something, um, just because of the connections you make and the, oh, have you tried, have you seen this source or, and, th and that, that thing that happens when you enter a competition. Um, it, it's same, uh, there's a same extent when you do a display, um, but the competition is so much more focused and you get so many more people coming to check it out um, that it's, in, it's one of my favorite things. Um, and so I think, you know, we need, we need to encourage people to think outside the box and figure out ways that they can display their stuff, even if it's not shiny and artsy some sort of physical representation of their of their research yeah. yeah um this is just gorgeous i think this was um a display about herbs that were believed to be ruled by the moon um and so um it's about half just the plants and half uh treatments and um so I kind of went through an herbal, found all of the treatments that, that because through parts of our period, um, physicians believed that parts of your body were ruled by astrological bodies, as well as diseases were affected by them. And then the plants were ruled by them. And so um, you would want to pick the herb that you used based on that astrological body. And so this one was all focused on the moon. Um, and so I just, kind of tried to find every every herb that was ruled by the moon in that herbal and then half of them I tried to make treatments out of so wow so cool sorry it's a little blurry but uh so this was my first time in no my second time in an alpine scholar uh, and this was kind of the beginning of my dye uh project and basically I had just done one dyeing of uh one dye job of, of all these different period dyes. Um, they're all old world dyes, except for um, there was two new world uh, dyes, um, but. And, and, and it looks like you carded and spin it, spin it, did. <laughs> spin it, did it, spin it, did it. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah, I'd use a drop spindle to make, um, cause I wanted to show, I wanted to show uh, the dye stuff what the roving looked like died and then what it looked like spun yeah. um and so um i did a terrible job of spinning it i am not a spinner but i did it <laughs> so well i think that's awesome and it would have been insane to do that for a thousand yeah yeah so the first third i think of my thousand ways to die were actually spun on a spun a spinning wheel uh, Lu Juliana of, uh, who lives in here in Timberhaven is a wonderful spinner and she spun me a bunch, Wow! Um, but I was dying faster than she could spin. Um, mm -hmm. and so I had to supplement. It's uh <laughs> amazing. So just some plants. 
yeah so this is just some plants i picked um <laughs> anyway so this was for uh my project um so quite often in period um a medical person would basically make a herbal that contained the ingredients they could get a hold of um and so what i did was i went through period herbals and found plants uh, that according to the USDA plant database uh, had naturalized or had a species that was native to my shire. And so the idea was that if my persona lived here in Timberhaven, these are the plants that I could go out and find. Um, and so I found all these, uh, pressed them and mounted them. Um, and then I self-published a book that contains the treatments that are made from these. That's so exciting. Um, and then was told it was just copied and pasting. But um, <laughs> what? That, yeah, that was a feedback I got on that. So <laughs> that was one of the well, that was probably not the best way to do that. But um, so it uh, was that's not the only book that you've done, is it? It is not. So um, I actually um, after that comment, I uh, published a second book. Um, and you were like, I'll show you copy and paste. Yeah, it might have been a spite publish. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, it totally was. But uh, <laughs> so. Um, and and yeah. now you get contacted as an expert. Yeah, yeah. So um, actually was contacted by a publisher to publish another book. Um, so I'm working on, on my third one. Um, and then. Uh, I'm actually chatting with a documentary company from Scotland um, about Tudor medicine and so. That's so stuff. badass. That's so <laughs> cool. That's so exciting. I'm so happy for you. Uh, and then what's really weird is I, I have a Korean skincare company that wants me to translate period uh, treatments for them, um, which I'm like, I will. But you know, a lot of this stuff is not usable. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want me to so um i honestly don't remember what this was uh so this cool box it's got a bunch of little cubbies in it and those little bottles fit right down inside the cubbies um and so i made this display um because it would take me a week of working every night to put my displays together mm -hmm. and then the stuff goes bad uh and it is, you know, five boxes of glassware filled with weird substances that I'm driving down the freeway. Uh, one of my displays, I it was, it was a uh, 12th night in Portland, uh, freeway. Someone cut me off. I had to slam my brakes, and a third of my stuff broke, and I had like stinky fluids seeping out all over my car. No. Um, so. Uh, someone found this box for me and it's got all these little cubbies and all these little bottles sit down inside it. So it's like a condensed and uh, easy to carry, uh, easy to carry display. So that was, super cool. I was super excited about it. Um, this is one of my classes at Ontario Westmore. Um, so what I have done um, is I found, I bought 12 mortar and pestles. Um, and so I do classes that are hands on that uh, 12 people can create the stuff as we go along. Um, and so I think this was that or it was after an herb walk and uh, we had picked a bunch of plants and we we're just making stuff. Um, I like to, you know, it's hands on uh, apothecary. And so um, bring your hiking boots. <laughs> yeah, bring your hiking books, boots. We'll pick some plants and we'll we'll dig through sources and, and figure out what we can make from them so do you talk about ethical harvesting too um no <laughs> so most of the stuff <laughs> sorry no so most of the stuff that uh we talk about are like weeds and invasive species and <laughs> you know like uh we don't you know we don't do anything that's endangered or um you know things like that so awesome <laughs> um so this is a guy getting leeched um 
And I actually had, um, for one of my projects, I actually bought three leeches. I have a picture. Um, and so I had uh, Hildegard, uh, Dioscorides, and Pliny the Elder. They were my three leeches. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I brought them to a kingdom a &S and uh, tried to get them to latch on to Claire the Dyer. Uh, she was a good sport. She wanted to try it. Uh, and it, it kind of latched onto her a little bit and then didn't want to. They didn't super enjoy the eight hour drive. Mm. Um, so that one was in Polsbo. So it was probably outside of Polsbo there. It's eight I, hours to Seattle and then around. So yeah. they kind of got sloshed around a lot. So they weren't super happy. I have had the experience of coming out of the water covered in leeches. And it's not, yeah, it's so it's gross. Awesome. <laughs> I, parasites freak me out, but um, <laughs> you know, leeches are part of it. So, uh, so these, um, some uh, ANS displays. So this one is a Mithridatum, which is super exciting to me. Um, so there was a treatment um, created in the first century to prevent you from all of uh, all of the poisons. Um, uh, so Mithridates was a king, and he developed an obsession with poison and antidotes. Uh, his mother had tried to poison him because she thought his younger brother would be easier to control. His <laughs> father was poisoned, um, so I can understand why he was obsessed with it. And uh, so he reached out to physicians in Egypt and all over the place, and then did all this research to compile and make excuse me this big this treatment. Uh, and he also like poisoned uh, people in the prison and like tried the antidotes on them. He oh. he did he did human experiments, human experimentation. Uh, uh, right. which I did. Um, I did a little humor. I tried. I tried the stuff out myself, but I didn't, uh, you know, poison anyone, especially not prisoners. Uh, but you can see um, what I did with this was the little jars in the front are the ingredients. Uh, the jar up on the box is the combined uh, treatment, uh, and it's mixed with honey. It's put in a an almond-sized bit of it is put in your wine, and you drink it every day. And then up on the the science fair. Uh, trifold uh, <laughs> that I spray painted black um, uh, is the um, kind of the history of the treatment mm -hmm. um, and the three that formed the one that I made and then how it changed throughout history. Um, and it was used clear up into the 1800s. Uh, it was thought to be to prevent you from the plague. Um, they later added different uh, like viper flesh and different things that created that had venoms in the idea that well obviously that creature is immune to its venom so if we put the flesh in there we will be immune to it too um and so it was a fantastic nice. project yeah <laughs> i'm actually gonna do a youtube uh video on it because i just think it's super neat um it also is uh steer car was one of my uh judges Mm. Uh, he was king, and I got I had uh, some for each of my judges to try if they wanted, no pressure. Uh, but it has beaver gland in it, and uh, so he took a drink and goes, "Wow, you can really taste the beaver in this." So um, <laughs> I, I I considered that a win. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it was it was a great project. It was super fun. Uh, the hardest part of it actually was finding all of the ingredients, and you know, hunting all over the place for them. But. Wow. And for people that don't know, Stickar is a medical doctor. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That just adds to the awesomeness of that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so good. Ah, there it is. That's uh, Claire. We're during the presentation. We're trying to see if we get it to latch on. It wasn't hungry. It was not. It was car sick. Car sick. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, poor thing. Yeah, so that's my uh, first book. It was my student project. Uh, so it's the Herbs of Timberhaven. And I actually have um, the start. I was going to do one for each branch in the summits as a start and kind of move out from there and then got discouraged um, and then sidetracked on. On to better things. things. Yeah. 
Um, but it's a super fun project, um, all period images, um, which I just love period uh, plant images. And so, you know, it was super cool. And I love um, the creative part of, of historical recreation where you take um, what's available to you in in the place where you live modernly and yeah. and adapt it to a period i don't know what the words i want to use are but um i love that whole thought process and i love that i love that you were doing that yeah uh it you know i think it's really important that we remember um the creative part um as yes. long as we're clear um as long as we're clear that we realize it's a creative part, um, you know, we, we should have fun and uh, you can make something that is inspired by a period thing that isn't quite right. Um, I wouldn't, you know, recommend internet in kingdom ANS, no. uh, but you know, like we should still, we should still embrace that kind of stuff and we should still uh, love that creative part. Um, Duchess Eleanor, uh, did a wonderful and amazing Star Wars party at Ontario West War when she was princess. That was just great. Uh, you know, and so like, you know, her sleeves were stamped with the rebel uh, symbol, right? Yeah. And like, obviously, they didn't have the rebel symbol on their sleeves. Um, but uh, it was super creative. It was a fun thing to do for that. And honestly, unless you're looking right really close, you can't tell what the design is. Um, and plus, plus it's it's a really good way to get people outside of the SCA interested. Yeah. And yeah. we've got to loosen our panties a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah. It's really, really important. Um, my son is a gamer. He's grown up in the SCA and he really has no interest. I told him that I would make him a straight up costume from whatever gaming game he wanted mm -hmm. and he could wear it at SCA events and he's like oh I'm down right yeah and I'm like all right and if some other kid comes to an SCA event and sees that and it makes him want to play SCA yeah. that's nice. yeah. so I really I really think that um that's important and I tell my students um be creative know the difference between the documentable things that are you you are doing and the not documentable things you are doing yeah and be honest about it yeah i mean we have a you know we we frequently use the 10 foot rule <laughs> you know when we're you know we're talking about people in their garb like if you if it looks good and they're happy with it we should just let them be happy <laughs> yeah. you know like it's just shut the hell up about it right <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have opinions. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is so cool looking. Yeah, this is that display from a different angle. Uh, this was at Twelfth Night, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And more plants. More plants. Um, this was uh, a little um, delve into making some tinctures. Um, and so I found some plants and, and made some tinctures and put their Latin names on them. Um, that was a lot of fun. So is this like a thrift store or an antique store find this box? Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So often uh, when I'm doing a display, it's like they obviously would not have had these little bottles. Um, but I also, they have to be pretty airtight to not let the alcohol out, right? Um, and all of my glass display, all of my glass bottles from the previous display, a lot of them are definitely not period. But to have a bunch of closed uh, containers that you can't see the plants is not a, a good display, you know. So like, it's I think it's important to uh, have things that look period esque and still achieve uh, a good display. Um, yeah. So. goes it circles back to that creativity thing <laughs> yeah yeah uh so this is the virtue of stones uh, display i did by albertus magnus uh and by albertus magnus in quotations uh they don't believe he actually wrote it uh someone just put his name on it to sell uh copies or whatever um 
to make it sound important. But he believed that stones uh, had magical properties. Um, and so it's, it's kind of along the, you know, the new age uh, uh, crystals and stuff like that. Uh, but it was totally period. And so, for instance, um, some of them he would believe he could believe that um, if you took it and broke it into four pieces and put them in ash at the corner of, of someone's house, uh, anyone sleeping in it will jump out and run out of their house. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Or uh, some of them, if you make a, a lot of them, sad to say, are involved whether or not a, a woman is a virgin or whether she has been, you know, uh, sleeping around, uh, you know, bastards. But, um, <laughs> so many of them are like, you know, if, if, if a woman wears this stone into a church, uh, if she has been, if she is a virgin, uh, she'll be fine. If not, she will just start peeing. I mean, just like really, like, just <laughs> really weird wow. things. Um, some of them are, you know, if you wear it on your left wrist uh, and travel, uh, you will not have any enemies attack you and stuff like that. So uh, it's a fun uh, kind of weird uh, period crystal uh, project. And so I uh, raided my mother's gem collection and then <laughs> uh, hunted and, and, and uh, <laughs> found them all and then labeled them with uh, the Latin name that he uses. So very cool. That same display. Uh, this is the display that uh, a third of it wasn't there because it broke. Um, so this was at another twelfth night. This was when it was in Portland, um, and this one I, oh no, no, this was uh, Alpine Scholar. Uh, I just saw the globe in the background. It was in a school in the library, um, but this was uh, one of my entries for Alpine Scholar, um, and so this was what the display looked like before it was broken. Um, and so this is the, the moon one again. Um, what's super neat is um, I included some water plants, um, which was really fun. Um, I actually, one of my very favorite plants I found during this project, it's called a water soldier. And it actually uh, gets calcification uh, that grows on it and that causes it to drop below the water when it gets winter and so it doesn't freeze. Oh, and wow. Then it stops producing that and it washes off and then it floats back up in spring. Um, it's a wow. super, it's a super cool plant. Um, unfortunately, you're not allowed to get them in Oregon. So I don't have any. Um, That's some evolutionary awesomeness. Yeah, it's super cool. I, I just was like, oh, when I, uh, when I found that out. So, wow. yeah. That's super cool. And this is that little display that I made. Um, I'm trying to remember what the focus was. So I usually try and pick uh, some because they're vast, right? There's just so many treatments and so many texts. And so I try and figure some like ruled by the moon or uh, uses plants from this area to try and dial in a display. And right. um, I can't I can't remember what that one was for this one. But. It was something super cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is um, my device uh, that I made in the style of a um, one of the Tudor windows. I'm drawing a blank on which one it was. Um, but it was super fun. Um, I mixed my own um, the black the shadows on the um, on the moose. Um, I actually mixed that myself from uh, a medieval um, stained glass handbook and fired it myself. Um, it was uh, it was super fun. I was first time using uh, the Grousling uh, tool, which is along the bottom that black thing. Uh, it was used so they didn't have a grinder like we use in modern stained glass. Um, so they instead use that tool to go around and shape the glass. Okay. And so, yeah, it was, it was super fun. Um, I love doing stained glass. Uh, I 
and I, I really like the period styles. I like, um, so if people don't know, modern stained glass right now, uh, what most people do is they use a copper foil that goes around the edge of the glass, and then that's what is soldered together. Uh, whereas medieval stained glass, they use a cames. So they're an H, uh, H-shaped uh, piece of lead that your glass fits into. And then you use a um, kind of a filler to fill it in, kind of make it air airtight. Um, so that was that was my device in stained glass. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Um, this is the Mithridatum display at something else. Something. Yeah. <laughs> So that is, uh, uh, this was for my paper about Henry VIII and his treatments that ultimately became uh, my second book, Pustules, Pestilence, and Pain. Um, so uh, I, this was used um, to, to uh, show what they did for uh, enemas. And so they would put a herbal solution in a pig bladder uh, you would have a tube that the pig bladder would attach to, and then you would insert it rectally and squeeze the pig bladder, forcing the fluid up into the person's rectum. Good times. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. So I was super excited. Uh, found a place that get, that uh, gives you pig bladders. Um, it's a super weird thing to play with. Um, they... <laughs> <laughs> but it comes comes in this little tiny box and it's all like folded in on itself and it's this weird crinkly skin like thing right and uh it's stiff uh and you put water in it and it gets soft and pliable and it feels like the outside is wet but it actually isn't letting any water out it is super it is just it's really weird wow yeah it's a does it eventually fun. kind of disintegrate i mean can it can it be can it store things for a period of time or no um so it does mold uh, i found um <laughs> it didn't disintegrate but it got super moldy it was really gross so <laughs> i had to get a new one <laughs> not recommended for not uh, recommended for long term yeah <laughs> uh so this was my uh my vigil and um, there was a bunch of cardinals that invaded and we were playing a trivia game and um, I won one of the, one of the reliquary crosses. <laughs> so that uh, was super fun. Very cool. And I, I, I haven't been around very much. I met him once and um, I haven't seen him since. And I was really happy to see a photograph that he's playing. Yeah, so he was actually there when I got my offer. Um, and then he came to my elevation. He's he's really, he's fantastic. Um, he's originally from Artemisia, I think. Is he? Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I actually didn't know what kingdom he came from, but best <laughs> bling ever. Yeah, totally. And he has an awesome bling weasel. I mean, like, he's just, he's really, he's really great. He's awesome. All right. Uh, so this was my elevation. I was kneeling in front of the crown. Um, uh, this uh, my outfit was made. <laughs> my outfit was made by Mistress Aurelia from the West. Um, there is a uh, 1603 or 1607 uh, painting of a botanist, and he is has an herbal in front of him, and he's got a really cool tool, and he's he's posing, and so. Uh, I wanted the outfit from that, and so um, she made it for me. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so this is, uh, I had no idea that uh, Eduardo had commissioned a bunch of uroscopy vials. So one of the things I find really interesting is uroscopy, and that's the study of urine. Uh, so it checks to see what color it is, what it tastes like, what it smells like, if there are particulates in it. Uh, and so they, in period, would determine uh, your likelihood of survival based on the color of your urine and all that stuff. And so he had each one of my speakers come up with a uroscopy vial filled with uh, apple juice. Um, and so it was... <laughs> it was some good shtick. It was, it was really great. And then and I gave them, I handed them out to the royals to drink. Uh, <laughs> and you can see um, that Eduardo very much enjoyed it. He sure did. He did, yeah. <laughs> So it looks so happy. 
<laughs> <laughs> so what was funny is the uh i think we went in order of op no oh, we went royal pier first um and so i think turk was my first speaker um so i asked i asked uh, turk to be my royal pier uh speaker and he came up and i'm like oh he's got a cup in his hand like it totally didn't even and then he walked up and handed it to me and that's when i realized uh that that it, what it was and then they just kept coming and so at this point like i was i had like two in one arm and the other one and like it i was a little slow i think i was distracted but uh it was well your brain kind of fogs out when yeah. it's happening yeah yeah it was it was definitely it was amazing um <laughs> Uh, and and you know just the the speakers and the wonderful things they say is just um and then i don't know it, it was definitely a um this was me getting my medallion um so this is a, a household medallion um so my apprentice sister uh was a was uh elevated with it um and so i hope that I can pass it on to someone. Um, so this is after the elevation. Uh, she was little, elevated the same, or they were elevated the same day. Yes, yeah. Uh, no, no, she was elevated the month before. Oh, okay. But she was, you know, still a baby, a baby Laurel. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my mantle of opinions. Uh, so my cape that I'm wearing actually has black work, uh, has embroidery that's black on black. And it actually says opinions in all of the uh, wreaths all the way around my capelet. Nice. Because uh, you're not allowed to have opinions until you get your mantle of opinions. And then, oh. you know, so now I have now, opinions. Now you have all of them. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I love this shot because you're like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so uh, I had, when I um, had finished um, the rain, um i didn't have a cornet um and oh i think you froze oh okay well hopefully he will unfreeze and we aren't gonna lose him message him and see where we're at. Hang in there with me, everybody. I'm going to work to uh, see if we can get him back. Okay, so he's signed out of the Zoom and uh, Hopefully he will sign back in here in just a sec. We will see. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. And uh, you get to look at me on my own for a, a little bit. How exciting. <laughs> um, uh, for those of you that don't already know, uh, we are interviewing Duke and R tomorrow, my sister and I, and um, next week uh, we have uh, on Branch of Laurels, we have uh, Magnifica Tulia from the West. Um, she is uh, one of the two women who started um, between two peers in the West and uh, they were the inspiration behind uh, my sister and I doing these shows. So I'm super excited to talk to her. And then we will be um, interviewing Duchess Wren uh, next Wednesday. Um, and she is a knight and a pelican and a duchess and one of my very favorite people in the SCA. So uh, super excited about interviewing her. Um, I am not hearing from him. Oh, yay, he's back. Woohoo. Yay. <laughs> yeah, 
your audio is not quite working yet. There we go. There we go. Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> My computer just decided it didn't want to do anything anymore. So it happens. <laughs> it is absolutely not the first time. It is <laughs> mid interview as well. So um, thanks for coming back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, he. I don't know where I cut out, but uh, so the uh, Cornets were buried, uh, Viscounty Cornets, and then when Durin won his first uh, Cornet, um, he went and uh, dug them up. Okay, so why were the Cornets buried? We, we lost you at... Okay, <laughs> sorry. At so... Um, and his wife and him who ruled together divorced or something like that i i was i was a little unclear on it uh but and i don't know he went and buried the coronets out at a tree or something there was some reason he did it i i'm i'm a little unclear um <laughs> but when durin won he went and and dug them up and gave them to durin to wear um and so they're the the coronets that the, the coronet that durin wears and so when i stepped down i didn't have a coronet um yet and so Duran let me wear his and then I had commissioned one with uh Sir um Sir Cathan and uh Viscount Snorri uh had been telling him to put me off because he knew my offer was coming up and knew that ultimately I wanted a laurel wreath on my coronet oh. um and so um, I had, they, you know, waited until, uh, I had my offer to officially figure out what I wanted. And so this is the cornet he had made for me. Um, and so traditionally, um, the, you know, the Viscounty cornets are kind of the sweeping peaks. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I wanted something that was a little more English. Um, and so um, back east, uh, Viscounties often will wear uh, twice as many pearls as a, as a baron or baroness. Uh, and so I did uh, that, which is a little bit more English. And so this is my cornet that I hadn't got to wear until this moment, so. <laughs> Had you seen it before? I, I had seen it, yeah. Because oh, okay, it looks yeah. like you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i had seen it before so it's just a really great shot so it looks uh, like finn is speaking for you yeah finn was who i asked for my pelican speaker awesome <laughs> <laughs> um and then eduardo was my my laurel speaker so and this was you know, trying to hold all of the <laughs> vials. So, uh, yeah. And this is your apprentice family, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So uh, right next to me is uh, Aton, who does the most amazing tapestry weaving. Just amazing. Yeah. Um, and then Eduardo. And um, uh, the next to Eduardo is um, Vasilisa, who is um, just stepped down as Glamir's Baroness. Um, and then next to um, her is my apprentice sister, um, who don't think has picked a new SCA name. Um, but um, so those are my apprentice siblings that I had um, for most of the time I was an apprentice, so. Awesome. And Vasilisa does um, uh, beautiful weaving. Yes, yeah. And uh, Deborah, who is next to her does, um, or Deborah that, does. That's um, uh, Jacob. Yeah, for uh, his his SCA, her SCA name used to be Jacob. Oh, okay. Um, 
Okay. But I can't remember. I don't think they have picked an SCA name. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, she does amazing uh, theater and singing and uh, bardic type stuff. So. I apologize for dead naming. I did not realize that there had been a change in gender. So, so it's a fairly recent, uh, she fairly recently came out. So, uh, which is why I don't know if she has an SCA name yet or not, because I don't think she's picked one, so. Well, that's really exciting and I'm very happy for her. And uh, yeah, yeah, me too. I look, I look forward to uh, seeing that evolution take place. Uh, so this was uh, Duomus and uh, Snorri's step down. Uh, Turk and I went down. Um, it was in a beautiful, like a mason hall or something like that. So uh, we got pictures with the uh, the four princes. <laughs> That's awesome. And back to your laureling, I think. This back is to my laureling. Um, so I uh, chose to swear fealty on uh, the Queen's Crown, um, and uh, I requested it because, uh, in my mind, it represents all of the SCA. Um, so it is made by an artist out of materials created by a scientist, uh, worn by a servant to the people who inspired martial greatness. And so it really embodies in my mind the, the queen's crown embodies all of the parts of the sca um and so that was the piece of regalia i chose my to swear my oath on i i love that explanation i also chose the queen's crown it was the set of crowns before this one uh-huh my reason was a little simpler that uh you know that that the queen is uh normally considered the representation of of art and and beauty and um that's why i chose that and i really i like your um i, I might have to steal your explanation because that's much more inclusive and much better <laughs> <laughs> i i what i actually said was a little bit smoother and a little bit nicer i'll have to find the words but uh <laughs> it was it it's i don't know i and i am you know i was i was a royal consort so you know it was you know part of that as well yeah um, yeah it's awesome we're gonna have to start calling it the concerts crown yeah yeah uh, so this is the last time i entered uh kingdom arts and science um and i i entered I entered this time to prove to myself um, that I was a Laurel. Um, and so um, I, I uh, it, it was probably, it was definitely the hardest uh, of the times I've entered anything. Uh, the stress and the uh, pressure I put on myself. <laughs> but um, this was the final uh, presentation. Uh, so for those who don't know, um, uh, Kingdom Arts and Science is three entries, uh, and then uh, the top, however many determined by the crown, goes forward the next day and presents a single entry, plus talks about what they want to do as a champion and why they think they should be champion. And so this was the final presentation the next day. Um, and so I ended up getting the sable bonnet, which means I had the highest score and two of my entries uh, got me the um, Scholar of Ontario. So I proved to myself, yes. <laughs> so. Uh, That's awesome. What, what was your plan? Um, I think that a lot of people don't realize that um, being a arts and sciences champion is, is a job. There, there's things that you can do with that role what what was it that you decided to do um so i i just i, I traveled a lot <laughs> um i um i ran uh the, i coordinated the classes for the renaissance village at golf wars 
and went to their inner kingdom display. Um, I, um, you know, I, co I coordinated the arts and science for golf or for Andrew Westmore that year. Um, I just kind of went all over the place. I tried to um, also boost the number of people that would that entered, and I tried to uh, speak to the greatness that is our rubrics, and that documentation is not scary. Um, and so I just I kind of um, tried to share with people how great competitions can be that they they're not uh all scary uh, and if you set goals that are achievable for you and you go into it with goals um that aren't always necessarily winning the competition that you can still leave feeling like you accomplished what you wanted very cool so, yeah that's a lot that's awesome yeah yeah it was a lot of fun um i i enjoyed uh, I got to uh, attend uh, uh, well, uh, right there, actually. Um, <laughs> I, I, I got to go uh, to Golf Wars and uh, be a champion for um, for Stiarna, or Stiarna, wow. Yeah, it's okay. Stiarna and um, Tiarton. And um, it, it was amazing and fun. And I, I got to become friends with her I felt and really kind of connect and so uh it was amazing to see we she caught the golden snitch and won the known world party um it was it was just amazing so uh I also entered the uh inter kingdom bocce ball tournament uh which I did not win uh, <laughs> uh the the salon there the renaissance village as it's called now uh does a inter inner uh kingdom bocce ball tournament uh so it's a lot of fun cool and i think this is the after like go forth and hug your peers yeah yeah so uh, there wasn't a lot of room my poor uh people that processed with me just kind of had to uh sit in the in the uh, aisle because there was not room uh for them to move through the laurels and out to the side yeah, um so I was, I was way in the back of the room i couldn't even get up there i was like well i'm here I'm witnessing, but I can't get up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this was uh, the uh, people who, um, some of my friends who you know were with me during my path, uh, as well as some of the laurels. So yeah, it's after the go forth and hug. Yay! And then I'm gonna kind of well, we'll stop here. Um, we are running at about we're almost at two hours. All right. So, um, and I can tell you're getting tired. So um, this is you and Turk, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So this was um, the crown after I became champion. Um, and so we entered crown together. Um, and so it was, it was kind of fun because I was champion. We're at the very front of the line. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we got to so be there for... For people Everyone. that don't know, Ontier uh, lines up um, uh, according to precedence um, when when you present uh, during for professional before crown. So that's kind of exciting. And and it's uh, it's it isn't limited to the fighters uh, OP. It's fighter and consort. Yeah, the highest of the pair. So um, you know, in normal OP, uh, Turk is. I don't know, six or seven ahead of me. Um, but because I was champion, uh, the champions have a higher OP uh, during their term. So I uh, got to scoot us right up to the front. It was fun. <laughs> and, and I love, I love the, you know, the pageantry and I love, you know, it is a long, long procession because our crowns are so large. Yep, um, forever. But it's really fun to be there right up front and, and hear the fighters speak of their consort and, ask permission it's it's really fun so and then this is uh turks knighting uh so he was offered knighthood uh the same day that i was elevated to the laurel um so i got to help put his knight's belt on um along with uh sigrid who was our uh grail bearer so in the summits 
uh, we have a position called the Grail Bearer, and they uh, carry into court the Grail of the Summits, uh, which holds everything, which is kind of where it's, it's very similar to what I, I what I think of for the Queen's Crown. Um, but there's a line in the investiture uh, where the Grail of the Summits is everything that the Summits is. Uh, it is made by an artisan. It is carried by a servant. It is uh, protected by a fighter, and it is drank by from uh, with royal hands. And so it, 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 it's the Grail of the Summits is like the the best, the most loved <laughs> part of the Summits regalia, right? And so this this Grail Bear is your advisor or the person that is to help. Um, connect you with a certain group of people. Uh, some cornets have picked a child uh, to help connect that cornet to the children and the new people. And um, Sigrid is, uh, her name is uh, basically Sigrid Truth Speaker. Um, she does not uh, pull a punch when telling you the truth. Uh, <laughs> she just lays it out there. And so um, she is, you know, one of our dear friends and someone that we felt could tell us what we needed to hear. Um, and so she was one of our, she was our grail bearer. And so uh, we got to put uh, Turk's knight on, uh, knighting belt on, so. I, I also like that it was a woman because one of the um, complaints that people have about having uh, same gendered uh, couples on, on thrones especially if they're, if they're both male, is leaving out um, the feminine presence and having a woman as your grail bearer helps to balance that out a little bit too. I think that was a really awesome choice. On yeah. Several levels. <laughs> well, and our, our head of retinue um, was, was a woman. And, um, you know, we, we kind of, most of our main strong retinue members were women. Um, so we, you know, it, it And I mean, it definitely <laughs> kept us in line. And, like, I mean, we had very strong Cassandra Devereaux is amazing. Uh, she was our court coordinator. Um, and the amount of work she put in is, is flower. It just blows my mind. Temperance was our uh, head of retinue. And um, uh, I had attendance um, of, you know, any gender, um, and so, you know, it was, it was important to, that we, we all, we had strong women uh, to kind of try and balance the fact that there was two men sitting on the thrones, so. And I, 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 I didn't mean that as a, as a criticism. It's just, it's one of those um, arguments that comes up over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I like that you, um, you took some consideration and. and yeah, yeah. Love this photo it's really cool yeah so this was uh during the uh, coronation and the champions toast to the new crown um this is one of my very favorite uh pictures from um my time as champion so it's it's quite often my banner uh, my cover photo on my page <laughs> so <laughs> more champions um this, this was taken, there was a week that this was all over the place and it was meme after meme after meme. Yeah. So I pulled a couple just because. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of, uh, so let's stop at this one. Uh, so this is uh, Viscountess Temperance, uh, who uh, is my apprentice. Um, and this was our, uh, our apprenticing uh, contract and so she keeps mine and i keep hers so this was at uh the last event before we closed down uh, <laughs> so, yeah all right uh i once upon a time entered summit's bardic and so this was all of the entrance going in um it was an experience. It was fun. I like dabbling in Bardic, but definitely not my strong suit. 
Um, See, they're stepping up or stepping down. Stepping down as champion, yeah. So getting ready to give back my regalia. And, well, and also you, the last event before we close down. And you got to pass it on to someone totally awesome. I uh, know. She's amazing. So cool. Duchess Eleanor is fantastic. Uh, I just, the amount of nerding that her and I do, uh, we're just constantly messaging each other about plants that we find and uh you know she really she focuses mostly on uh, vegetables and stuff like that um so you know we have some overlap but at the same time like there's just so much that that she studies that is not what I study that is just it's so much fun so and she's done such a good job during a pandemic of promoting the arts and of engaging people online and yeah I'm really yeah. Um, I'm proud of her, which is, I don't know, maybe a little weird to say, but <laughs> no, she has done a fantastic job. Uh, I am just blown away by the amount of work she's done. Uh, I just, I just love her. She's fantastic. Also a fan in a big way. And she's from the summit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you summits arts. Biggest yeah. Kept secret in the kingdom. And she was my daughter, so she 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 uh, was a princess after me. So um, it was it's fun. That, that cool relationship. Yeah. Um, so we are at two hours. All right. Which it goes by fast, huh? It does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to talk about tonight? Um. So a little bit. Um. So I had done a series of ask the ask the non laurel questions on my Facebook page that kind of uh, turned into a lot of- It was of, a lot, it was amazing. It was. Um, and so I, I just want uh, to encourage people to um, um, I want laurels to continue to strive to hold ourselves accountable um, to figure out ways we can lift people up. Um, and I know that as a whole, the council does, um, laurels work hard, <laughs> you know, and you, but we often don't see it, um, if you're not a laurel, right? Um, and so I think we as a whole need to work on our, how we're perceived. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we need to be much more um, transparent in our processes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I want to encourage people if um, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with the questions that I asked, um, but I want to encourage people to continue asking those questions. Um, ask non laurels uh, what they're, what they're, what they see the process as. Um, and I feel like new laurels are a good group of people to kind of do that because we still. They're a bridge. We're Yeah, we're a bridge, right? Um, and so, you know, I still remember my feelings towards laurels when I wasn't one. Um, and I can look back and realize a lot of the time I was unfair. Um, and I, you know, you don't see it all. Uh, we laurels, like any other peer, like any other person has bad days. Uh, we have we say things that are not intended to be the way that they are perceived, um, and so I think we you know we need to continue to strive and and work and try and connect the non laurels with the laurels because I think we will be able to lift more of them up and um, and support them better. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we sort of touched on it earlier. There are a lot of people in our kingdom creating a lot of really cool things. And um, the ratio of laurels to artists is really low. Okay. We can't we can't know everybody making all the cool things. So um, we we need help. You know, yeah. there are, there are I have a whole thing about niches in the SCA. You know, there are there are little sub communities all over the place, and until one of those communities has some sort of connection with a peer 
um, they may not be seen by other right. people. And they can, you know, people use the term fringy. I hate that term. Right. It it's it's wrapped in and why peers need to be more approachable and um, and people need to be brave and approach peers. And if you get brushed off because someone's busy or in kid crisis or whatever, um, try again, <laughs> try with somebody else. <laughs> you know, I, I like to think myself fairly approachable. Um, I, I love talking with people and there are events where I literally am running the entire time. Right. And so like, you know, I, I am sure there are plenty of times that I have brushed someone off and I just hope that I hope that the people I have realized that it wasn't because I wasn't interested in what they're saying. It was because I was on the way to a meeting or I was on the way to a class or, you know, there's all these, these things that we do. Um, and so, and hopefully, you know, we can continue to use uh, the internet to bridge that uh, and, and allow us to communicate when we're not at events running around like chickens with our heads cut off. And, and I'm realizing that um, that's maybe a next step I can take is to host um, some Ask the Laurels um, Zoom meetings where people can yeah. come in and ask questions. And um, that maybe would be a good thing to do. Um, so I did, uh, I've done a couple, I've hosted a couple displays that were um, Laurel Invitationals. Um, and so I did one at Twelfth Night, I did one at Eggles. And most of the people who, who displayed said they probably would not have displayed had they not been asked by a Laurel. Um, and it also allows Laurels to be the ones who's reaching out and saying, hey, I want you to do this. Okay. Kind of similar to the Rose Tournaments where you have a Royal Consort who's reaching out to a fighter saying, I want you to enter. Um, so things like that, or, um, you know, I want to now, uh, after that, after these conversations with the uh, Ask the Non Laurels, I want to have some, you know, roundtables and conversations where it's, you know, a couple Laurels and then non Laurels, yeah, come and ask questions and, and stuff like that. So I think we need more things like that. Yeah, I do too. And um, I, uh, I would love to talk to you more about that. Um, and about other things that that can be done um because i have lots of ideas too but i'm old guard right right yeah <laughs> and um i would like to help facilitate um your ideas and 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 help help get stuff done so, awesome yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all for it um i really loved that series it was very um educational <laughs> yeah i want i i I know I, you know, I'm not friends with with every Laurel in the kingdom, um, so, um, but I think they're public. So if, you know, if anyone wants to come and look at them, I'm going to try and figure out a way to compile them so that um, I can share them with the Laurel groups and kind of maybe do we, like a Google document or something. Yeah, yeah, because you know we need to be aware of how we're perceived, and know that the way we're perceived is not necessarily true but how can we, how can we better that? So. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That, okay. That's super exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so. thank you very, very much for your time tonight. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, I apologize for the random uh, loss in the middle there, but. <laughs> it happens uh, actually pretty often. It's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I really appreciate you coming back and um, and sharing yourself with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. um, and thanks everyone for hanging in there and watching tonight. And uh, we'll see you soon. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>